Hey guys, it's Darwin here with a full breakdown and gear list of what I'll be carrying on my through hike of the Penhody Trail. So on February 4th, I'll be starting my 335 mile through hike of the Penhody Trail. The Penhody Trail runs from central Alabama at Flag Mountain all the way into Georgia where it meets up with the Benton Mackay Trail just 70 miles west of the Appalachian Trail. Now yes, I am still through hiking the PCT starting on April 3rd, but I figured why not do a mini through hike before my long through hike just to get all my gear dialed down, get my legs in shape and get me in that through hiking mindset. So I've spent the last couple weeks here in Northern Georgia getting my pack dialed down, getting everything to where I really like it. Now, as far as my gear goes, the pack setup is gonna be pretty similar to what I'll be carrying for my through hike of the PCT, my main pack setup. Um, I have added a few new pieces of gear that I've never tried out before that I'll be trying on this trail exclusively and then seeing if they're gonna work for me out on the PCT. So my base weight is coming in at 11 pounds, five ounces, and that is for everything aside from food, water, fuel, trekking poles, and the clothes that are on my back. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and bust it open. I'll do a breakdown of all the gear. I'll show you the new stuff that I'll be carrying, and we'll go over some of the specifics. Let's go ahead and start over here with the basics. The pack that I will be using on this hike is the Z-Pax Arc Blast. Now that is the one that I've had now for a couple years. Uh, the only thing that's different on this from the stock Arc Blast is the fact that on the front, I have added a hip belt pouch uh, to keep my camera in or some snacks. And then I also have the shoulder pouch. You guys might recognize that from my Arizona Trail Nero pack setup. I just transferred it over to this pack. I love the Arc Blast. If you're not familiar with it, it is a 55 liter pack. It's made of Dyneema composite or Cuban fiber, um, and it's awesome. Next up is my shelter. I'll be carrying the z Packs Duplex, and inside of there, I have the entire tent, and I also have eight titanium stakes. So the Duplex and the eight stakes. Moving along to my sleep system. I'll be carrying my long-lived, very well-loved Thermarest Neo Air X-Lite. That is a long. Next up is my Trekology Ultralight Pillow. Gotta have a pillow on the trail, like having good sleep, like having a lot of support for my head, so that's coming along. Next up is my arse pad, butt pad, sit pad, whatever you wanna call it, it's coming along. That is my original one that I am still using since my 2015 through hike of the AT. Next up, I consider it part of my sleep system is my Goose Feet Gear Down Socks. Those are only like two ounces and it's 850 fill down and they're super warm because I usually get pretty cold feet at night when I'm sleeping. So those definitely help me get better sleep on the trail. And then for my main sleep system, that is my Enlightened Equipment revelation 20 quilt so i am taking a 20 degree even though it's in february it's not going to get down crazy cold at least i don't think so and that is in a z packs uh cuban fiber stuff sack next up is my cook system and my food stuff so that is my z packs cuban fiber food bag and that is a little rock bag with 50 feet of z line in there so that is a full bear bagging hanging system. Next up is my main cook system. I have my Sea to Summit Alpha Aluminum Spork that has been with me for quite some time. And then new to my pack setup is actually something I've been wanting to try for a while. And that is the Vargo Bot Titanium 750 Mug. Now, if you're not familiar with the Vargo Bots, essentially what it is, is it is a cook cup uh, that you can use on a stove, but it also has a screw top lid, so I can also cold soak in that. You guys know I'm a big cold soaker, so my plan for this trip is I'm probably going to be cold soaking about 90% of the time, but I did want to bring that just in case I want to cook. Uh, so along with that, I'll be bringing my BRS ultralight stove. Crazy lightweight little stove, only weighs 
0.9 ounces so I'm just gonna throw it in there and then if for some reason I want to cook I have the option for that again that's a system that I am trying out for the first time just because I've been wanting to check it out for quite some time so I left the Talenti jar at home and I'll be bringing the bot and giving that a try on this trail next up is my water filtering system and water storage I'll be using the famed Sawyer Squeeze Regular. So along with my Sawyer Squeeze, I'll be using my Knock Water Bag. That is a two liter bag that I can use to filter with and also store two liters of water if I get a dry section. And then under that is just a big gallon Ziploc bag that I can carry those in so nothing in my pack gets wet. For my main water storage, I have two one liter Smart Water bottles. So all total capacity, I have four liters of water storage but knowing me, I'll probably only ever carry two liters, but I have it just in case. Moving on to electronics, I have my iPhone 7 Plus. That is gonna be my music player, my phone, internet if I need it, a way to take notes, pictures, everything. That is my main electronics hub. Then I have the Yuko Air 150 headlamp that has been modified with an extra little strap. I really like that little headlamp. It is USB rechargeable. It's been working out for me pretty good on the trail so far, so I'm gonna bring it on this trip and make a decision if I wanna take it on the PCT with me or not. Next up is an extra battery for my camera that I'll be using, which is the camera that I'm filming right now with, and that is the Canon G7X Mark II, along with a Joby Gorillapod Action. Next up to charge my electronics, I have an Anchor PowerCore 10,000 milliamp charger. And then I have a small bag of charging cables, headphones, a charging block, and pretty much anything else that I'm going to need to plug in my electronics that I have in my pack setup. It is a little bit windy out here, so sorry if there's a little wind noise in the camera. Next up is my Diddy bag, which I use a Z-Pax Cuban Fiber Diddy bag. And in that Diddy bag is my first aid kit, which I broke down a couple times. If you guys want to find the video on that, you can. I have a Bic Mini lighter, an ink pen that I have wrapped Luco tape around. I have a Spyderco Ladybug Mini. Great little knife. It's perfect for me on the trail. A mini toothbrush, a travel thing of toothpaste, and a chapstick tube of Burt's Bees because my lips do get chapped, especially when it's cold outside. Moving up here, we have my Deuce of Spades trowel inside of a little Ziploc bag that also has some toilet paper. So pretty much a little bag that has everything I need to do my business in. All right, so let's move over to clothes. Uh, first off, we have my jacket that I'll be wearing on this trip, which is the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Apex Insulation Jacket. So it's not a down jacket. It is a hooded synthetic jacket uh, that is made of 7D. That is actually a 7D prototype, so not available yet. Um, I love that jacket. It's great, so it's coming with me. Next up is my rain jacket that I'll be using, which is the Z-Pax Virtus rain jacket. That is a new piece of gear for me. I've used it a couple times, but haven't used it on any extended trips. So this is going to be the first time I'm really putting that to the test, and it's supposed to be a pretty rainy trail, so I'm excited to get that out there. Another new piece of gear for me, which are the Enlightened Equipment Copperfield Wind Pants. I've never had wind pants on the trail, but I'm pretty much just bringing them as an extra layer from cold protection. So instead of bringing a full-on pair of hiking pants, I have my shorts and my tights, and then these to be that outside shell to break that barrier. So I'm going to try those out on the trail for the first time. Down here we have my Outdoor Research transcendent down beanie. I pretty much only ever sleep in that on cold nights just to get a little warmth to keep all that warmth in so it's not escaping on my head. I have another new piece of gear which are the Z-Pax Virtus rain mitts. Again this is going to be a pretty rainy wet trail so I'm bringing those along trying those out for the first time. I've never used rain mitts but because I do wear a thin liner glove, if it's raining a lot, I want to make sure that my hands are not getting soaked and cold. So those are a nice barrier to put on the outside of my next piece of gear, which are my Outdoor Research liner gloves. Once I get started hiking, my hands warm up pretty fast, so I don't need a big bulky glove. So pretty much my glove setup is the liner gloves and then the Virtus rain mitts to kind of give myself enough protection from the rain 
and from the cold. Next up in my pack is the shirt that I sleep in and just to have an extra shirt, which is the Icebreaker Merino Wool Super Tee. Uh, really nice, super comfortable shirt, great to sleep in. Good to get out of that hiking shirt for the day and just to have an extra dry piece of clothing. And then I have an extra pair of darn tough regular crew length socks and that's just an extra pair of socks for me. So all of that is what will actually be in my pack and what makes up my main base weight. So next up are the clothes that I'll be wearing on my back for the majority of the time on the trail. Uh, first up is my favorite hiking shirt, which is the Columbia Silver Ridge Long Sleeve Light Hiking Shirt. You guys have probably seen that in a ton of my videos. That's my favorite hiking shirt no matter where I'm hiking. I love that thing, super versatile. Next up are my Nike Pro Combat Running Shorts. Uh, that's a new pair that I just recently got because my old ones were finally starting to fall apart. Next up is a pair of the Nike Pro Hyper Warm Tights. A little bit warmer tights on this trip. I was using my Patagonia Light Tights for a lot of my, my hiking trips out in the desert, but since this trail is gonna be kind of chilly, I'm gonna rock a little bit heavier of a tight. The shoes that I'll be wearing, which are the Ultra Lone Peak 3.5s. One of my favorite, one of a lot of hikers' favorites right now. Super great shoes, super comfortable. I do rock a super feet insole in those, so a little bit modified to my taste. Next up are my Dirty Girl Gators, my favorite Gators on the market. Love Dirty Girls, gotta have Dirty Girls. Check them out if you haven't already. My favorite buff. This buff has been with me on every trail and every trip for the past four years. It's still holding strong, it's still in there, so it's coming with me. And then the socks that I'll be wearing most of the entire time out on the trail are another pair of darn tough merino wool crew length socks. Last up um, that I will be carrying that I don't include in my base weight are my trekking poles. So the trekking poles I'll be carrying on this trip and that I've been carrying for a while are the Nock Vertex Carbon Cor Trekking Poles. I like them a lot because they're a Z pole, they're carbon, they're super light, they're awesome. I use them to set up my tent and I use them as trekking poles. So those come along with me. All right guys, so that is it. That is everything. Again, my base weight is 11 pounds, five ounces without food, water, fuel, trekking poles, or the clothes that are on my back. I feel pretty good about this pack setup for this trail. Um, now it is in February, so I do expect it to be a little bit cold, but the temperatures aren't looking too bad right now. High 50s during the day, low 30s at night, but we do expect to get a lot of rain which is why I added a couple of those extra things to my pack setup. So it should be pretty interesting. It'll be nice to get back out on a trail that's very similar to the Appalachian Trail because it's still in the Appalachian Mountains to get me back in that feeling of being on the AT. As soon as I get back, I will be doing a recap video where I'll talk about some of the gear that maybe didn't work for me or some of those new pieces of gear that I tried out and maybe what I would change about my pack setup. But like I said, I'm pretty confident that this pack setup is gonna be really good for the Penhody Trail. If you guys wanna follow along on that hike, go over and check out my Instagram account. I'll be trying to post a photo a day from the trail to keep you guys updated on where we're at and what we're seeing. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and as always guys, thanks for watching.